Today I'd like to talk about a, a topic that is, is taught in high school chemistry as it's called dimensional analysis. Now I, it's, it's, I don't know who invented that name. There is a, in physics there is something else I, that's actually called dimensional analysis which involves finding a, a, a dimensionless constant that you can use to make sure that your experiment, which might be a small scale, matches the performance of a big, like if you're going to do a wind tunnel of a 747, you don't have a wind tunnel big enough for a 747, so you make a little model of a 747 and then you say, no wait, how do we have to adjust the speed of the flow of air or whatever to simulate what would actually happen with the real thing and have it be valid. But dimensional analysis in high school chemistry is, is something else. What it is, it's about setting up a problem to make the units cancel. So it's a conversion, it's a way, it's a system to do conversions uh, where you have units on things. And so let me just go through these problems. Now let me just say one thing. In high school chemistry, when I took it a long time ago, this was by far the most useful thing that I ever got out of high school chemistry. In fact, I use this almost every day now. It applies universally to any kind of problem. It's not limited to chemistry problems. Let's go through the problems and then so you can kind of see the similarity, then I'll show you how to solve them. <coughs> so here we have how many seconds in 24 years, right? So we just have to convert seconds to minutes to hours to days, years, etc. How many dozen eggs in 3,500 eggs? Right, and here we have a bunch of statistics, and I used uh, exponential notation, 4e to the 11th power, so 4 times 10 to the 11th power, stars in a galaxy, then we have galaxies in the universe, six planets per star, and one planet in one times 10 to the 19th has life. So then the question is, how many planets have life? So this one is a little bit more complicated. Here we have one from chemistry, something that you're going to learn to do by the, you know, like the back of your hand, if you don't already know how to do it. Uh, how many electrons are there in 4.6 grams of carbon dioxide? And we're given, so I don't have to look it up, the molecular weight of carbon dioxide. And then here's a cost problem. Find cost to drive from San Francisco to Los Angeles, a distance of 405 miles. Gas is 4.15 a gallon, and our car gets 18 miles per gallon. So let's go through, let's start with this simple one, and then you'll kind of see how this evolves. It's all about having units cancel, right? If I have A, and then I have something else with an A in the bottom, you know, B, and then a B here, and a C, as D, etc. All these things cancel, right? The A's cancel, the B's cancel, the C's cancel, and I'm left with D, which is what I wanted. So that's the idea. Now, in this case, what, we, what we're going to do is instead of having A, B, and C, we're going to have units, hours, seconds, pounds, gallons, miles, etc. But it's not always the question is, you know, you have to look at the problem and see what do I want to what do I want to end up with as units? What is my final output, D? And then therefore, what do I have to start with? Like, how do I have to go through this to get the thing to, the, to go in the right direction? Let's do the classic chemistry problem. How many electrons in 4.6 grams of carbon dioxide, right? So we have a, a known starting point here, 4.6 grams. And we have to now convert that. So what do we have to convert it into first? Well, electrons, remember, are a property of how many atoms, right? How many molecules, and then each molecule has one carbon and two oxygen atoms. But the, re the, rate, the way we know number of molecules is the Avogadro number, which is not stated here, so you have to know the Avogadro number. So 4.6 grams, we know that there's 44 grams per mole. That's the molecular weight of carbon. When I get done with this, I'm going to say a word about significant figures also. So we have 44 grams per mole. And now we say how many electrons, right? So in each mole, we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And we know that each molecule has, well, let's see, carbon is uh, 12, right? Carbon has 12, oxygen is 16, number 16, so that's 32 and 12, 16, 32 and 12, 40. 
Oh, okay, 40, that's the same as a 44. I'm, I was going off molecular weight. What's the uh, atomic number of carbon? Well, now I don't remember that off the top of my head. Who knows? Is it six or eight? Well, whatever. We take the, the we take the number of electrons in carbon and an oxygen multiplied by two. We have that number, and then that's going to give us our final answer of electrons, right? So the moles cancel, the grams cancel, the uh, molecules cancel. I don't remember the atomic number of carbon and oxygen, just the atomic weight. Uh, but that's hopefully you can see how that's done. And so now we have one problem here with cost. Cost to drive from San, San Francisco to LA, 405 miles. Gas is 415 a gallon, and the, uh, our car gets 18 miles per gallon. So, now what are you going to start with, right? What's the obvious fact? Well, the thing that's the thing that the only thing that's presented here that doesn't already have a ratio is the distance. So I'm going to start with that, 405 miles. And we have 18 miles per gallon. And we have 415 per gallon, right? So that's going to then give us dollars. The cost is in dollars. The miles cancel, gallons cancel. So hopefully you can see that this is an incredibly powerful tool that will help you to solve all kinds of problems, word problems, things in life, you know. You just have to know how to set it up. And the idea is you want to have everything canceled. And so that the thing on top that you're left with is the final answer. Okay, I hope this makes sense. We're going to do a whole series of uh, videos on chemistry, and I hope you find them useful. Send all your problems or questions to solve at midnighttutor.com.